Okay, again, you are with Volleyball Explained uh, podcast and our edition about the Italian Super Lega. Nicole is here, I'm here, Ron is unfortunately not here. But however, we are going to talk about the regular season, which ended last weekend, about a cup won by Piacenza, surprise or not. And also at the end for some rumors uh, which uh, have taken place in the last weeks uh, about the so-called uh, silly season is coming. Okay, uh, Nicola, thank you for being here. How are you first, of course? Oh, fine. I mean, having Trent on the second place is, <laughs> is a boost to, to my feelings right now. Okay, before we start... I would like to remind ourselves that we gave predictions. Actually, you didn't. Uh, I and Tony uh, did uh, do the prediction. I don't know how many months uh, ago. But let's start with that. And then we'll check actually what we, me and Tony uh, predicted right, what we predicted wrong, and uh, all of that and uh, see what our um, successfulness was. Okay, let's see. Well, for me, the worst, the worst, the worst, the worst, uh, Taranto, the last team. Then you have Padova. Then you have Siena. Surprisingly, but, you know, Siena as the nine place. Then ten, you have, have Cisterna. So, uh, sorry, 10, yeah. yeah. You have Cisterna in 9 and Verona in 8. Then you have 7th place uh, Monza. Uh, and you have 6th place Modena for me. <laughs> then you have 5th place uh, you have 5th place Milano, of course. And then you have the top four teams that for me can be Lube in the in the four. Then you have uh, maybe in third place Trentino, and second place of course Piacenza, and first place and finally not not the least Perugia to win it all this season. Okay, twelve. Place Taranto, 11th place Cisterna, 10th place Padova, 9th place Siena, 8th place Monza, 7th place Verona, 6th place um, Modena, 5th place Milano, 4th place Lube. Third place Piacenza, second place Trentino, and first place Perugia. Okay, uh, now let's see the real ranking after 22 rounds of uh, volleyball. Perugia undefeated, Trentino, Modena, Civitanova, Lube, uh, Verona, Piacenza, Monza, Milano, Cisterna, Padova, Taranto, and Siena. Uh, Recapitulation, it's funny because I didn't get any of the teams right be between 5th and 12th place. Uh, we both, me and Tony, didn't uh, get the relegated team right. However, I nailed three of the four top teams. I, I put Perugia in first, Trentino in second, and Lube in fourth. I believe both of us. Uh, underestimated Verona, overestimated Piacenza, and uh, for sure, uh, I believe that both of us also uh, overestimated uh, Siena, um, and now they are relegated. Um, Nicola, first and overall, let's say it in this way. Um, impressions from the season from the regular season of course well uh, everybody i respected the, the beginning of the season 
Perugia took the, the regular season. I honestly didn't think they would have won every single game they they played into, but they were the clear favorite to end on the first spot of the ranking at the end of the 22 game days. Uh, on the other end, from second to eighth place, uh, everything could have happened because uh, if we see it uh, a little bit more close, we could see that for example, Trent and Verona have won the same amount of games, 14 games. Uh, win, uh, they won 14 games, they lost eight, but they're split by seven points. And the difference in winning games between Trent and Milano is just four. And well, with a couple of tie breaks, all this position could have been uh, shuffled in, in another way. Uh, the point is that basically every of this team have to deal with some injuries during the the regular season in different periods that could have been one of the reasons because so many matches were unpredictable uh, at the beginning of the of the game day and could have gone either way uh, before the, the the end of the the match itself um, when it comes down to the to the last spots it has been a pretty entertaining fight between Padova Taranto and Siena and Siena unfortunately had the history I will say his history repeats itself because uh, four seasons ago, they also built a team with uh, some big names, but they couldn't uh, keep up and stay in the, in the Serie A and the Superliga, sorry. And this season, they had a pretty bad start. They, they start winning, they start reducing the gap, but then wasn't enough. Um, as I did last year, I didn't make the prediction this year, but as I did last year, I would have ruled out Taranto, despite as being probably on paper the, the weaker team because of the coach, of uh, Vincenzo Di Pinto, uh, who has always had to, to line up teams that fight for survive, and he has <laughs> been doing it pretty cool. In the, in the past uh, 20 years and these years again he somehow find a way to have his team safe and especially with some addition during the the year because taranto lost stephanie but uh, found lawani which is one of the good surprise of the super league of the past two months i i guess then on, on the other end uh, the only team that could have escaped the the relegation contest let's call it like that uh sooner probably padova because padova have put on display a pretty good level of game but they weren't able to to close uh so many games before the tie break or they lose sets but just on the advantage and they found themselves fighting to the end and they're also pretty happy that they stayed in the super league because they're a team that uh, help uh, youth players to to grow uh, just to, to to name a couple, let's uh, remember uh, Bottolo or Balazzo, which have won the World uh, Champions in Italy. Too. Yeah, uh, last uh, last last summer, and so I'm I'm pretty happy they will be in the Super Lega last year and uh, next season. So they will probably have some good ground for for the upcoming uh, young young stars in in Italy. Yeah, if we, for example, name their outside cheaters, uh, they have uh, Desmet, who is 23, Asparuchov, who is 22, uh, Takahashi, who is 21, and uh, Davide Gardini, who is uh, 24. So the, 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 the oldest of, of their outside cheaters is 24, and uh, only because of the fact that he was a college player in the NCAS. So NCA uh, and you know that uh, going to an American university is something different. But uh, uh, could you share with us uh, your positive and your negative surprise? Well, probably. I mean, I wouldn't be too harsh on negatives because, as I said, most of the team has to deal with some key injuries during the the game. But if you look at the standings. And especially considering what happened at the end of February in the Coppa Italia, of course, uh, seeing Piacenza on the sixth place, and I mean ten points behind Trento in the in the second is probably the biggest uh, 
upset of the of the season so far. But we know that volleyball is a sport of playoffs, so everything could change in a couple of uh, of weeks again. And the surprise, actually, for the uh, for the gap they were being able to put between them and the relegation, of course, Cisterna. Cisterna actually had a shot of the playoff spot till the last uh, game day. So if we consider that despite um, I can say a team that didn't change a lot in of the key players regarding this season to the, to the last one, they weren't uh, credit for for such a I could say a, a, a nice journey to the, to the to the next season without risking anything in the relegation uh, the relegation contest. So I will probably take them as a surprise and of course, uh, if we consider your prediction, uh, which has probably been pretty close to my prediction, also seeing Modena in the in the third place with uh, 40 yeah. points and 12, 12 win is uh, is pretty cool. Uh, Verona, we knew at the beginning of the season that would have been a coin toss basically every game because they were young, they are uh, strong uh, uh, physical uh, players, uh, but I didn't expect them to win so much so many games during uh, during the season so it, they could also be a, a surprise and then l- let's see how they will do in the playoff round against the Civitanova. yeah let's start from the end so because verona is a very interesting team their last 11 matches are four consecutive defeats and then seven consecutive successes so it's uh Pretty much, I don't know if it's a coin toss or I don't know uh, a permanent coin toss for for some time. Okay, my 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 two surprises are negative surprise. You mentioned Piacenza, of course, Piacenza, but we shall take into account what you also mentioned that Piacenza were uh, without Lucarelli and uh, Leao for a very big chunk of time. So that that should be that should be considered. But my negative surprise also with injuries is Milano. I expected Milano to be, okay, not much higher, but at least uh, on fifth or sixth place. So I expected Milano to be to be higher uh, because they have a very good team uh, with uh, uh, Patrick, who is leaving after the season, but uh, whoever, uh, with Ishikawa, with Tibadipur, uh, uh, Mel Garejo. We'll see that Mel Garejo actually performed pretty well. And probably my positive surprise will be also surprising because my positive surprise is Perugia. And not because Perugia is... Um, not because Perugia is first. Actually, we both, uh, Ronnie and I, predicted that. But because of this unprecedented... I believe it's unprecedented. Correct me if I'm wrong. No defeats. Actually, only one point, uh, one point uh, taken against them, uh, and that was from the team of uh, Trento, which ended uh, second placed. Yeah, it, uh, it never happened in the rally rally point system era that a team won uh, every game in the in the Super Lega. It happened at the, in the early '80s uh, with the Robert Di Capo Torino coach by Silvano Brandi. But there wasn't even the playoff at the end of the season. They won the 22 games, uh, but it's a prehistoric era if we compare with the the actual volleyball. Okay, uh, before going to the playoffs, because that's really the part that matters. Let's see two two more uh, two more schemes actually presented by you uh, in Pilole di Volley, your uh, your. Uh, Facebook and uh, the Twitter page. Um, okay, most points during the season are this Lagumja. Probably that's the reason, at least one of the reasons for Modena being in the in the at the third place. Most aces, Yuri Romano, the Romano Emperor uh, from Piacenza. Uh, that wasn't enough for more than sixth place, but we'll see. Uh, a bit later in the podcast, what happened in the cup and top blockers, Marco Podraschanin from Trento and Aiden Zingo, which could be a surprise probably uh, from uh, the team of Cisterna Australian who played in, I believe, a lot of teams in Italy. 
Cisterna, Verona, Trento, probably I, 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 could, uh, I could miss something. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I remember it correct, but I think that Zingle was a top three blocker uh, five or six years ago, uh, but it was pretty unexpected to, to see him on top of the, of the ranking this season. Uh, Podrashani is a uh, real ability that you know you you could always count on him when it comes down to 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 blocks. And as you say, Lagumisha with his uh, all these points uh, made up for the inconsistency of uh, Ngapet probably during the the season. Bruno take no, took notes during the games, and so he kept serving the the Turkish or opposite more than. The probably ever in in his career. Okay, and the other uh, the other scheme is the most MVPs during the regular season. Here, uh, first place from Matej Kaziski, thirty eight this year, thirty nine years old, playing in a, a let's say a new position, even though he played. Uh, uh, rare, but rarely in this position as the in the in the opposite position. But uh, this season, uh, regularly in this position, uh, six MVPs awards uh, in the fourth, sixth, eleventh, sixteenth, eighteenth, and twenty-first round for Matej Kaziski, uh, and uh, the second-placed um, players in this. Uh, uh, in this uh, ranking are Oleg Plotnitsky and Yuri Romano. Uh, your comment, because uh, we know that you are a fan of Trento, you actually follow Trento very closely during the year. So what do you think makes Matei that good on that age, which is not very typical to be that, that performing? I, I don't know how to call it because it's it's really except uh, uh, yeah exceptional yeah it's difficult to keep finding new adjectives to to put close uh, Matej Kaczynski name but I think that one of the traits that's always been uh, the main one during his career is is his mental toughness uh, I rarely see a player who reset so quick after the after a play uh, regardless of the of the outcome of the play, whether it's a winning point or he gets blocked or he made a mistake, uh, he keep playing on an outstanding level throughout the the game, and it's so remarkable. He's keep doing it at the age of almost uh, thirty nine uh, years, and if we look at the games where he was awarded with the with the MVP award, uh, five of them were uh, away games for Trento. Uh, we, we all know that thanks to um, to the knowledge of the of the arena when they play home, players usually are more uh, uh, effective playing at home. Uh, but um, for Matei, it doesn't make any difference whether it is uh, the BLM Group Arena or whether you have to play in Palapanini against Modena or in Eurosola Forum against uh, Cittanova. Uh, he kept delivering and. He was also the most reliable weapon for Sbertoli uh, all year long. But what is what he is keep doing after so many times being on the top level is is, is just amazing. I mean, uh, it's 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 one of the things uh, uh, that probably <laughs> not not even Trento uh, would have imagined at the beginning of the of the season. Uh, they would have imagined that uh, Matei uh, could have a huge impact, but not that good. Uh, would probably making him the only player who can't uh, sub off uh, during uh, during a game. I have a question. Uh, in the picture we see, for example, we have f four players from Verona having a lot of MVPs. Uh, Lucas Pirito, uh, Nomori Keita, Rok Mozic and Maxim Saposhkov. We see uh, two, two players from Civitanova. We see two players from Milano. We see two players from Modena, or even yeah, two two players from Modena. But we don't well, we don't see any other player of Trento. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think so. There is not another player. So my question well, is: 
do you think do you think that uh, Micheletto and uh, and Daniele Lavia underperformed this season? I know the question is awkward because they are second in the in the in the regular season, but uh, with a big gap to uh, to, to Perugia. Uh, yeah, we, we could say that. I mean, they probably uh, gave less than than expected, but for me, for two different reasons. I mean, uh, Micheletto has been pretty uh, inconsistent, but able of very high level games. Uh, why Lavia probably never found his rhythm during the sorry <coughs> during the season. Uh, just for for giving the information, both have won two MVPs during the the, the season as well as Sbertoli uh, uh, for Trento, and but none of them seems to be actually uh, the player who could be the real addiction of of the team uh, during a uh, during a game this year. Um, probably the the sort of uh, mental relax after winning the the world championship or, or probably also the fact that they're still two young players uh trying to build the, the consistency of the big names in the uh, in the super Lega. but yeah they, they could have done better uh, especially uh, we, we had the the chance to see it during the the coppa italia where it basically was matei against everyone <laughs> and I hope they will uh, start uh, running their their engine and the uh, uh, higher uh, uh, dire gears during the the playoff. Okay, and one uh, one last question before going to the playoffs uh, uh, schedule: uh, Is there a precedent where uh, a, a player from the losing defeated team gets the MVP award? Do you remember uh, something like this? This season, no. This season, uh, every time uh, they've awarded uh, the MVP award at the end of the game, went to the, the winning team. So basically, if you sum up uh, the, the award from each player of each team, you have the same amount of yeah. uh, wins than awarded for, for every team. Uh, one last thing that uh, they have been awarded uh, 132 uh, MVPs during the season, and just once the award went to a libero, and it was uh, <laughs> Gabriele Laurenzano on the very first game of the of the season, Trento Siena, in the in the beginning of the uh, October of the, of the season, and then no other libero have been awarded uh, uh, with the, the MVP, uh, which means that. Is still a game of attackers, at least the one that, that catch the the eyes during the during the game. Yeah, we have uh, we have four MVPs for the Checo, four MVPs for Spirito, and that's it. Yes, that's it. At least in this game. Uh, okay. Uh, now it's time to go to the Rio Rio and uh, the Rio Rio are the playoffs because. Uh, Perugia will play Milano, uh, Civitanova will play Verona, so the, the winner from uh, the, these both pairs will play in the semi. Uh, no, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. We'll play in the semis, Trent, uh, Trento Monza and uh, Modena Piacenza. Uh, something interesting, curious for me is that uh, uh, this year, even the quarterfinals will be played three out of five, which was not that in the Previous years, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm, which is a little bit surprising for me. Do you know if there is some reason for this, or it's just uh, more matches, more marketing, more viewers, more money? Yeah, I think that's the reason. <laughs> because I mean, there's the need to make the season longer in, uh, in volleyball between clubs and nationals uh, tournaments. You you have basically players playing all year long so probably i mean you, you could have a better a better series if you had uh, one victory which means that the the lowest ranked team w which they were playing the second game at home uh, are not 
they, they know that if they win it, they could extend the lead, they could extend the, the series, and there's not a sudden death game. Let, let's see like that. So if you had the, the, the third win to get to the semifinal, the probably also the, the, the highest ranked team know that they have more chances to close it, and maybe they lower their the focus a little bit on the second game, but but I, I don't know. I mean, why they they picked five games? It seems pretty silly to me because the Italian teams also have a long path in the European Cups, so they have to play basically every two games from there to the end of the season. Yeah, uh, let's go game by game, and let's start with the. Two that are pretty much easier to predict. Perugia Milano, do you think that can, something can happen uh, here? I mean, I mean, even one. I don't know. It's it's it, it's a little bit heretic to sit to, to say that after that series, uh, Milano can uh, win against Perugia one match even. Uh, you know, the the playoffs are that good because they're so unpredictable, but. It's unlikely. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the, I, I tried to picture my in my mind the second game played in the Allianz Forum, uh, probably stack of uh, of fans with the old team pushing Milano, uh, Milano knowing that is or one of the best chances to, to take away again from Perugia. But Perugia has so many weapons, so many chances of rotation during a game and during a series that I, it's unlikely in my opinion, that Milano would win the game. I would love to see it, but <laughs> not going to happen. Uh, Trento Monza, same question. I also think that Perugia will treat three, three to nothing easily. Trento, Trento Monza? Trento Monza, in my opinion, will be defined by the outcome of the second game. Uh, if Trento will win the first and then will win the second in Monza, probably the series will be over in uh, the third game okay. in, back in Trento. If there will be 1 1 after the second game, probably there will be the tiebreaker on the fifth one. So for me, it's either 3 0 or 3 2. Uh, of course, yeah. I hope Trento will win it. Uh, yeah. I, I I couldn't see for me a, a fifth match here, but one win for Monza is possible, and that should be of course the the second the second match, if any, of course. Okay, uh, let's go to the to the pair of uh, quarterfinals, which seem the blockbusters in the in the quarterfinal uh, in the quarterfinal round of playoffs. Civitanova, Verona. Here, at least. Uh, uh, as, as long as I know, uh, the, the red card of Odostin Stoichev would, uh, would actually um, be an obstacle for him to, to, to be at the bench in the, in the first match, right? Yeah. Or not? So, so he won't be there. That's a pretty pretty big blow, I, be, I believe, for, for Verona. That's why uh, Stoichev was that furious to the referees. Uh, very strange and uh, not... Uh, I can't explain uh, myself at least uh, what this red card was uh, uh, because of what. But however, uh, I it's it's re it's really hard to predict here because Verona seems to be the, the 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 team in form. However, Civitanova has the the uh, the host uh, advantage, and if they take the first game. Uh, especially also because of the fact that Stoichev won't be there, uh, I believe it will be a very hard task for Verona, and it could be easily uh, go to the to the wire. Let's say it in this way to the fifth match. Yeah, at least it's what most of the people are expecting. That I mean, the two biggest um, challenge that Verona has to face is that. Despite their probably, even if we consider the, the physical terms, uh, slightly better than Lube, in my opinion, so far, at least right now at the moment, they have to face a team that it, it, it is way more experienced 
in the player off run. We don't have to, to forget that uh, Luba has player like uh, the Checo and Zani, uh, Zaitsev, they have played, I don't know, many dozens of, uh, of these games. Uh, while Verona, if we look at the starting lineup, uh, they, they don't have such amount of experience. And the second could be a sort of psychological barrier because Verona hasn't been in the semi-final of the or the playoff in its history, at least the the, the recent one. So for the past uh, 15 years, they never been there. They in two occasions they had the chance to gaining an early lead in the series and then uh, and being uh, eliminated from the from the quarterfinals. But if they keep their enthusiasm they've been showing in the past, uh, let's say, 20 days. They really have a shot to the, to the semi-final this year. But Lube is a team of hot wolves, <laughs> like, like, let's say like that. So they they could have, have some uh, access upon their sleeves. And it, it will be funny. In my opinion, it will be the most even of the, of the four. And I'm looking forward to see well, what's going to happen? Yeah, for me, a slight advantage for Lube due to their host advantage and the experience, even though their experience in the playoffs is a team experience, that, not that much uh, players' experience, because they have, uh, we know, Jant, uh, Alex Nikov, Matija Boto, but however, they have, of course, uh, the Cheko. Uh, and one little secret. Uh, for the birthday of Rado uh, last uh, year in September, I I wish him a top uh, four spot. So uh, at least at least in my in my uh, perception, I hope Verona will will prevail. Okay, and uh, Molina Piacenza, um, uh, despite the ranking, my my favorite here is Piacenza, and I believe they will uh, they will be there in in four matches. Let's say. Probably. Huh. That, that, that's also pretty interesting because uh, we have to see how long the Piacenza team will be fully healthy because in the past couple of games, uh, Simon wasn't there. And after the Coppa Italia, the team looks like a little bit uh, too relaxed, in, uh, in my opinion. And Maybe you don't get it uh, out of, outside of Italy, looking for a foreign uh, perspective, but the Palapanini Modena is really, in my opinion, the biggest home field advantage uh, for a team in the in the volleyball uh, the volleyball world, at least here in Italy. So Piacenza have to win at least once in Modena if they want to uh, to advance. More likely to win at least two. In Modena, and it will be not the, that easy. Modena also have a ton of experienced player in their lineup, so they're, they're used to these games. Uh, we can name Bruno, of course, uh, Stankovic, uh, the um, and Gapet. But the difference will be the performances of the ones that haven't been in the playoff so so long. Like uh, La Gumja and uh, and Rinaldi, Piacenza on the other side as player who has been in the playoff, if not in Italy, also in the European uh, European Cups. But they have one shot. I mean, in during the regular season they could have lost some games and then recover in the next ones. During the playoff series, you can't do that. Uh, you have to be consistent throughout the series. Piacenza, yeah, slightly favorite also for me, but I will not underestimate the Palapanini effects for Modena. Yeah, <laughs> Palapanini should not be underestimated, even though I, I have only one match live there. Okay, because we we ended up the playoffs, uh, the playoff conversation with, uh, with Piacenza, now it's time to talk about the final of the cup, the finals of the cup. Because in the final of the finals of the cup, something happened that didn't happen any other time until now in the season, uh, in the in the uh, Super Lega, in the Champions League, or wherever. Because Piacenza beat 
Perugia, 3-0, and then won the cup against Trento. But they didn't beat them, just they smashed them, crushed them, annihilated them. I don't know, it's, it, it's a really, really surprised. I watched the match and it was strange to, to see Perugia, even though I believe in the, in the first set, they had some uh, set, set points. points. Uh, uh, Leon Leon missed one at least, and and then uh, and then Piacenza uh, uh, won in straight sets. Yeah, that one uh, shot for Leon was the turning point of the semifinal, because it would have point uh, would have put uh, Perugia up one, and then with the momentum shifting from uh, Piacenza to Perugia, but winning that set probably uh, had a sort of. Uh, Venom effect on all the the mindset of the Perugia players that they uh, they look like they were in a rush to to get one set back and they're making poor decision uh, towards all the the next two two sets. But Piacenza, at, at a certain point, you could see that they wouldn't slip that game from their hands. And they they cruise it to to the final, uh, j- just to give uh, uh, some some insight of the of what they achieved. Neither Trento nor Perugia had lost a game in straight set in, in the entire season, but the two games in this uh, <laughs> in this final four where Piacenza was pretty untouchable. So the, the, the there was one of the best two days displays I've seen in my let's call it in my years of watching volleyball. The, 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 probably one of the best weekend for a team for a club team that, that I could remember. Uh, th- that's that was really a surprise uh, beating both teams three zero. And uh, by the way, the other the other semi final was also interesting, but. Uh, uh, taking into account the the other developments in the other semi final and also in the final, I uh, couldn't be that uh, that spicy for the for the general volleyball uh, volleyball public. Let's let's see also the the statistics you you've taken out from the from the final uh, with uh, twenty points for Real and uh, Brizard and Simon. By the way. We know that Simon is great, but this season he's scoring like an opposite. He has a twenty points, for example, for three, uh, for three or twenty-five points for four sets, which is amazing. The, the, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's pretty normal for for the for the fact that uh, Lucarelli or Lau or both weren't there. But however, the, what makes Simon is. Uh, in 35 36 is uh, is very close at least uh, at least very close if not the same like what matei uh, matei does in uh, in 38 yeah about uh, uh, these stats there are one aspect that doesn't that doesn't meet the eyes in the stats in the fact that trento always had a player on option on simon uh, with the blocking uh, so even if he's not scoring 20 points, he's taking away every single action a man from the from the block. So uh, Leal or Romano or Lucarelli had to face just uh, two man blocks rather than uh, three man blocks or uh, e- even a one man block. Um, in my opinion, in this final, the MVP should have gone to Brizard, who, who was spectacular during the final. But usually they, they give the, the MVP considering uh, both the final and the semifinal. And by far, Leal was the best player also in the, in the semifinal. Uh, Trento wasn't a match for, uh, for Piacenza, uh, especially, as we say, for the inconsistency of the two uh, outside hitters, Michelet and Lanvia, but also because, uh, as you can see from the stats of the blocks, it's there, written there, because Lisinath didn't play in the semi-final and the, in the final yeah and just to to mean uh, to have a comparison not talking about the strength but of the importance of the player leasing us to trento is what simon is for um for uh, piacenza 
So without him, uh, the the traffic in the middle uh, is uh, is way lower. But even with Liz enough, that wouldn't be a an even match in my opinion. <laughs> That'd be a chance I would have won in the strike set anyway. Okay, and so lastly, uh, of course, uh, we decided to take some time to uh, to talk to the rumors that are uh, coming and going in the in the media for transfers in season 23-24. And let's start with Matej Kaziski because the rumor says that Matej will play for Milano. Yeah, that's a dagger. A dagger in the art of the of the Trento fan. But it's his own rightful the decision to him. Uh, they want to play two more years. Uh, for what I get, the Trento was uh, was uh, gaining just uh, one year and if it keep playing <laughs> the way he played in this this season uh, it, it, it's a good thing for volleyball that he will keep playing as a starter uh, even far from from trento but we all know that the end of, of his career will be back in trento so it's just like a, a bittersweet uh, goodbye <laughs> to him uh let's add to this that uh Milano will try also to take Peter Derlich from the team of Cisterna. So that could mean that uh, Matej will play again outside hitter and Derlich will play opposite. Here we see also a probable new signing of Perugia uh, from uh, coming from the Polish league, uh, Wasim Bentara, Tunisian player, and Donovan Javorno, who will actually go from Trento to Verona uh, according to the to the rumors but another team which could have some movements uh, when it comes to players is the team of Modena where the rumor says that Erwin Gapet will go and join again Nimir in Halkbank in Turkey but will be replaced by Another very curious and popular name, Osmani Hunturena, who can rejoin and uh, be together with uh, Bruno. What do you think? Could 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 uh, Hunturena be on the same level as before? Uh, we we know what kind of player uh, Hunturena is. We know the class uh, he has and the put on display during these years but i i don't know whether being in a non i wouldn't say non-competitive league but in the, Ch the chinese league is not the super lega and uh, the turkish league is a great league but he has been just for the past uh, month so he will have to readjust to the level to the rhythm to the training session of uh, of italy and i don't know where that would be uh, something that he could keep up all season long. But I don't know. I don't think that the idea of Modern is having him playing every game, but to line him up uh, in those games that actually uh, really matters. Um, let's remember that Modena uh, didn't uh, went to the final four of the Coppa Italia uh, because it was eliminated by Trento. And being consistently in those final four is a must for a team like uh, like Modena. If we added that, two of the other rumors that of players singing for Modena are Vlad uh, uh, Daviskiba and uh, Maxine Shaposkov. We we could say that if Osmani will mix uh, in these uh, let's say weapons for uh, for Modena, it's still a great addiction to to the team. Okay, um, I believe we actually are done with the topics we envisage for this uh, episode of the of the podcast. Just I would like to to mention when the playoffs start because I can't see we don't have it this here, and I will check just in the on, on, the, the, on the 
Saturday. On the 19th, 19th of March, so on Sunday, the second matches will be on 22nd, 26th, the third, if needed, 2nd of April and 8th of April. That's uh, that. This is the schedule for the for the playoffs, and uh, and so also uh, we could we could make another podcast also to comment on the Champions League, but this is not going to happen now. We we are not prepared for that at least. Uh, the first um, only the first legs of the quarterfinals. Uh, uh, Past so uh, probably after two or three playoff matches we can comment uh, on both topics on the playoffs and also on the on the Champions League. Uh, that could be a that could be a thing to do. Uh, I hope Ronnie will be uh, will be with his new haircut uh, ready also for this uh, because um, for uh, unknown for us reason he w- he was not. Uh, able to join us uh, today and uh, yeah if you have something other to, to add if you if you have something in mind which which you need to be to be mentioned uh, yeah you can do it now no I think we cover pretty much what we, we expected to do okay uh, then uh, of course uh, subscribe to YouTube uh, subs- not to YouTube you are in YouTube subscribe to volleyball explained Subscribe to Cuban Spike, uh, find and um, mm, uh, search and find for Piloli Di Voli in Facebook, both and in Twitter. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we will be back uh, some two, three uh, weeks uh, from now in order to comment on happening in Italy. But also, I promise, because we have some comments about this about the Champions League, uh, which will also enter into a very, very interesting phase. And uh, bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye.